Many people living in rural areas of the world depend on subsistence agriculture as a means of living. Subsistence agriculture is a situation in which the farmers are growing just enough food to sustain themselves and their families, but do not have enough harvest to sell and generate an adequate income. For many subsistence households, there is a range of crops grown on very small plots of land. If a harvest is not successful, there can be detrimental effects on both the food security and the economic livelihood of the farmer and his family. There are countless challenges faced by rural farmers and their ability to generate sufficient income from their agriculture. For example, diseases, climate change, degraded soil, and misuse of cultivated land can all have negative effects on farming. It is therefore crucial to introduce practical, low-cost solutions that can improve farming livelihoods. This video will discuss five farming solutions that have great potential to support further agriculture development. Knowledge uh, for uh, crop rotation exists, but uh, how it's put into the perspective of, into the context of how farmers of the small-scale farming work is something that can be provided, so scientists can uh, provide it to, to, the, to the growers. Crop rotation is going to influence nutrient use efficiency, it's going to influence organic matter levels, it's going to influence things like water holding capacity, infiltration, disease cycles. Crop rotation helps um, maintaining soil fertility uh, because different crops have different depth of root zone so they they absorb the resources from different depths on the soil. Crop rotation is a great thing for maintaining a farmer's ability to stay ahead of insect pests and soil-borne disease. There's two aspects in soil. One is soil fertility, one, one, the other one is soil health. So mulch contributes to soil health. So always when you have, you should have a healthy soil in order to derive a, in order to bring about fertility, you know. Especially for weed control, it can be very appropriate. And um, mulching with compost, for instance, has been used extensively in home gardens. Mulching typically would um, support micronutrients and nitrogen, in particular, um, uh, being recycled into into the soil. It can be used as a, uh, a barrier to evaporation losses, right? It can be used as a weed control mechanism or it can be used, in fact, as a, uh, a means to assist in nutrient cycling. In arid and semi-arid areas, uh, producers and farmers know that you have to catch the rainfall, so you have to concentrate it, and, and especially for um, during the planting, the very uh, important planting period, but also um, uh, use water catchments and water harvesting techniques to, to get things like trees and shrubs and, and um, uh, growing. For instance, if you don't have um, uh, metal roofing or clay tile roofing on your house, it's very hard to collect water off of thatch. It's almost, it is quite impossible actually. So you have to have a hard surface in which to collect water. Water tends to be very limiting in some of these systems. Anything you can do to retain moisture in the system is going to be a benefit. A rain catchment area can store enough subsurface water for another three or four weeks of the growing season, which often is enough to finish a crop of small grains. Farmers benefit from livestock in, in a number of different ways. So it's in a smallholder agriculture in particular, um, animals provide protein, a very important source of protein. So through eating the meat or the eggs or um, uh, milk uh, products through dairy. Uh, and these, these can provide protein for, for um, household food security, but also they could create value products um, that can be sold Locally. To a certain extent, you impose some diversity on the system. Diversity is always good. With animals, you uh, have a, uh, a manure or organic matter source that, if managed properly, is a good thing. It's that adding 
animal husbandry into a crop rotation, being able to stable them and collect those nutrients and put them back on the ground where they're needed. With intercropping, you have the potential for higher yields. That's been well demonstrated. Higher yield is typically associated with, again, higher organic matter. Things like intercropping or strip cropping really do upset the, the ability of insects to be able to become a large and concentrated problem. Given the, the climate change and the uncertainty of, uh, of rainfall patterns, and uh, you need to rely on multiple crops. Uh, so that's what intercropping you know, really provides them, in, in a way, security against climate change. In other parts of the world, in Africa and Asia, you'll see similar uh, companion crops in the intercropping system. But I think it's important for uh, people to realize that one of the most beneficial crops could be a tree or a shrub. As you look at how to duplicate those natural templates of soil building, um, wellness, health, relational things, not monospeciation, but multi-speciation, you know, those are natural templates, natural blueprints, if you will, that as we duplicate them on a domestic scale, um, you know, they, they, they yield success and health, health overall.